Welcome to the Windows and Computer channel and I've had a few, it's a question I get regularly. I haven't talked about this in a long time uh, and there's been of course a lot of uh, pretty much, you know, nothing has changed really that much but a lot of talk about it of activation of Windows 10 and what actually, what are the rules of activation of Windows 10. So when you have a version of Windows 10, um, of course, it needs to be activated to be fully functional. Being activated means that it connected to a Microsoft server and actually activated uh, your copy. Now, when you use your PC, when you reinstall Windows, there's something that happens that's called a digital key that is created at Microsoft. Depending on the machine that you use, that key is going to be different. New machines usually have a embedded key within the computer itself now. But of course, you might not also have a embedded key. You might have purchased a Windows copy, for example, and um, you know installed it and it activated with that key that you have. So in that case, when you reinstall Windows, um, two things will happen. You either re-enter the key that you have, which means it will recognize that it's the same computer and of course activate. Or in some cases, you might not even have to enter any keys. When you do install the same version, and that's very important, the same version of Windows 10, it will actually check activation and the digital license that is created at Microsoft will recognize your machine and the version of Windows you have and it will know that you have an activated machine with that version of Windows so it will activate automatically. Now the rules that you need to follow are that if you reinstall Windows you need to reinstall the same version of Windows so if it was the home version you have, you can't go and install the pro version. It won't activate. It'll say that the digital key is not valid for this copy. So home, you'll reinstall home or pro, you'll reinstall pro and so on. Now, there's another thing that might actually interfere with activation of Windows and it's the modifications of your PC. When that digital key is created on Microsoft. It's created with a mix of your computer's brand and some key components within your computer, serial numbers. So it can actually recognize instantly that you're using, with a copy of Windows you're installing, you're using the same machine you were using before. So it will activate because it recognizes that you have the same machine. Since a key is only for one machine, that means that you can't transfer that key to another machine easily. You can't, you know, take that key and start a new machine and say, well, I'm going to use it on that machine. You'll have to call Microsoft to get that activated on a new computer, which also means that it will be deactivated from the old computer. Now, one of the things that I get asked all the time is, yeah, I've changed my hard drive. Will that cause a problem for activation or... I added RAM memory or changed my RAM memory. Usually when you do one simple change, uh, hard drive, RAM, that usually does not change anything. Um, one component will not break the activation, but several at the same time might actually break the activation because if you have more than two things or devices that you've changed, the uh, digital license will not recognize the serial numbers and think that you're having you're installing on a new computer. So the best thing to do at that time is to call Microsoft, let them know that you've upgraded your machine and that it's still the same machine and only one machine. Usually what happens is Microsoft will uh, deal with that and give you uh, the uh, activation sequence so that your new hardware is activated with the version of Windows that you have. And it also will depend sometimes on, you know, if you change a full motherboard, your Windows will not activate. Your Windows, um, you know, Microsoft's digital key will think you have a new PC. Big hardware changes like a new, a, a new motherboard are going to break the activation. But small changes like, you know, what is the most common? Changing your, um, your hard drive, 
uh, maybe you know using an SSD instead of an old hard drive or just using a hard drive that's bigger. Uh, RAM, memory, things that are the standard um, things that most people will actually want to change on their PC. Do not break activation and you'll be able to reinstall Windows on that new hard drive, for example, and it should activate without any problems. But going beyond RAM and hard drive, you know, a motherboard change or multiple parts at the same time, that might break the activation. You might need to actually call your call Microsoft for the activation. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.